Hello humans, my name is Kane, your air overload, and if you've always wanted to become a cute e-girl online, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, then you are at the right place. Because today I will show you how to change your voice in real time so that you can become anyone you want. So this video is basically an add-on to my initial voice cloning video with RVC I made a few weeks ago. So if you don't know what RVC is or how to install it, you need to watch that video first. Now if you've seen that video already, that means that you have RVC installed. And if you are one of my Patreon supporters and you use my one-click installer to install RVC, well in this case you don't need to do anything and you can skip that directly to this timestamp to continue the video. But if you installed RVC yourself manually, you need to do some very quick additional steps. Because to be able to use the real-time tool inside RVC, you need to install the corresponding requirements. So for this, you're gonna go inside your RVC folder, click on the folder path, type CMD, press enter. So then inside the command prompt window, we're gonna activate the environment with this command right here, then press enter. And then based on your GPU, you need to choose the right requirements file. So, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you need to install the requirements windows for real-time vcgui.txt. But if you have an AMD GPU, you need to use the DML version. So since I have an NVIDIA GPU, I need to install this one. So I'm just gonna copy this name. Then in some command prompt window, I'm gonna type pip install dash r, then control V to paste the name. And then I'm gonna add .txt. And then I'm gonna press enter, which will then install all the requirements it needs to run the real-time tool. And once this is done, you can close the web prompt window and then either launch the go real-time GUI.bat file if you have an NVIDIA GPU or the go real-time GUI.dml if you have an AMD GPU. But in my case, since I have an NVIDIA, I need to launch this file. Now, if this is the first time that you launch this web UI, you might see like this window that appears that asks you to install the Pi Simple GUI 5. And basically all you need to do is just create a free account on the website just click on this checkbox, then press OK, then click sign up. You'll be directed to the Pi Simple GUI website. Here you're gonna click on get started for hobbyists. Then you're gonna create your account and then click register. They will then send you a verification code in your email that you need to validate. And then finally it will give you the license key that you're gonna copy and paste inside the developer key field. And then press OK. And now we can finally have some fun. Because what you're seeing right here is the real-time tool inside RVC. And this is what we're gonna use to transform our voice in real time to another one. And to use it, it's actually really, really simple. So first you're gonna click here and select the model that you want to use, then click open. Then you're gonna select the index file corresponding to the model, then click open. So then here you can pretty much leave everything by default, but make sure that you input your main microphone and the speakers for the output, because otherwise you're not gonna hear anything. So then here right below you will see a bunch of options. Now the response threshold is basically how sensitive the mic is gonna be. So the lower the number, the more noise it's gonna pick up from the microphone. So if you live in a very noisy environment, I highly recommend just increasing that value a little bit and try to play along with the values and see which one really works the best for you. Now in my case, since my room is very, very quiet, I can just leave it at minus 60. It doesn't really matter. But for you, you might want to increase this value a little bit and see which one works for you. So next you have pitch settings, which if you watch my previous installation video is basically the same as transpose, which is basically the number of semitones used when converting the voice. So if you're converting a male to a female voice, you might need to increase that value to something like 12. But if you are converting a female voice to a male voice, then you might need to decrease that value to something like minus 12 so that it sounds a little bit more realistic. Now you can also play a little bit with the values and see which results sounds the best to you. But in my case, say I'm using a female voice, I'm gonna leave the pitch settings at 12. So the next, the index rate is basically how powerful the accent of the trend voice is gonna be. So like basically the index is basically the file that preserves the accent of the voice that was trained and that is gonna be replicated when you're gonna talk. So I found that the best value for this is very, very low to something like maybe 0.2 or 0.3 because if you increase that value very, very high, you will see a lot of artifacts when you talk. So definitely try to keep this value very low, depending on the voice that you choose, and see once again which works for you. Now the loudness factor is basically like the volume of the voice. The higher the value, the bigger the volume is gonna be. I'm just gonna leave it at one. But if you can start hearing some artifacts, you should definitely decrease that value a little bit. But usually this option doesn't really change a lot, except the volume. So then here the pitch detection algorithm is basically the algorithm that's gonna be used to detect your voice. And here the best is the default value of FCPE. You can also use MVPE if you want, they are very very similar. 
but a lot of people report that FCPE is actually performing even better, so you can try these two algorithms and try to see which one works the best for you, but in this example I'm just gonna leave it by default and leave FCPE by default. So next we have some very important settings. And the first one is sample length. So basically the way it works is that RVC is basically gonna take chunks of your voice and then stitch them back together and the sample length basically determine the length of that chunks of audio. So basically the higher the value, the longer the chunks of audio will be used and the less artifacts it will be when they're stitched back together and also the less GPU VRAM it consumes. But at the same time, if you increase the value of the sample length, it will also increase the delay of the voice. Now, the lower the value, the faster you're gonna hear the processed voice, but it will also increase your GPU VRAM usage. And if that value is really, really low to something like 0.002, the final results will be very, very bad with a lot of artifacts in the voice. And once again, this value really depends on your GPU, how powerful it is, the amount of VRAM that you have. So in my case, with my 3090, the lowest value I can use without hearing any artifacts is 0.04. But the value that I actually use is usually something like 0.15 because I found that this value usually works the best for me. But if you have a low VRAM GPU, you should definitely increase that amount a little bit and see which value works the best for you and your system. So the next, you have the number of CPU processes used the RV speech algorithm. So I mean, it's pretty logical. But at the same time, if you use something like RMVPE, you don't even need this value because it uses your GPU. So this value is not really super useful. So just put it at max if you can and see if it works for you. Or you can just leave it by default. So the next, fade length. So this is basically the length between the chunks of audio that are going to be used when they're getting stitched together. And the higher the value, the less artifacts you're gonna hear. So I definitely recommend putting this value as high as possible. So the next, the extra inference time, is the amount of old audio that's gonna be used to load into the chunks. So the higher the value, the better the quality of the voice, but it will also increase the VRAM usage, as well as increase the delay time. So once again, depending on your GPU and your system, you should definitely play around a little bit with that value and try to find a good balance between delay and quality of the voice. But in my case, I like to put it at 2.0 so that there is a low delay, but at the same time, I get a good quality audio. And for the rest, you can just leave this unchecked by default. The noise reduction doesn't work very well in my experience. And this, I really have no idea what this is, and I couldn't find any information. But if someone knows how to read Chinese, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so now that we have explained and selected the right settings, all we need to do right now is just click on Start Audio Conversion and prepare to be amazed. Because if I start talking right now, you hear that my voice sounds a little bit different. It's all psych, I'm not myself anymore. Now obviously I'm gonna stop the audio conversion because it is very very hard to hear yourself talk in a completely different voice and at the same time hear your own voice, but it's still really fun. And you can of course like change any model that you want, modify a few settings, install the audio conversion whenever you want. It's really up to you. Okay, so now you might be thinking, okay, that's great and all, but how exactly do I use this? Because the problem is that, okay, it's converting my voice, but the only person that can hear my converted voice is myself. How do other people can hear my converted voice when I use my mic? And also, how do I use this converted voice inside a call or inside a video game? Well, for this, we're actually gonna need to do a bit of software trickery. Because to be able to output this converted voice into another application, we're actually gonna need to install a virtual audio cable. Now, don't worry, it's actually really simple to use and very easy to install. Just click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page. Then you're gonna click on this little download icon and download the archive onto your computer. Then once you have the archive, you're gonna extract it onto your computer. Then you're gonna choose the vCable setup x64.exe, but you need to run it as administrator. So you're gonna right click, run as administrator. Now in my case, since I have already installed the driver, you should have a button that says install driver instead. So just click on it. And after a few seconds, the audio virtual cable will be installed onto your computer. And once this is done, you can close the window, reboot your computer completely. Very important because if you don't do that, it's not gonna work. Then relaunch the real-time voice converter tool and under output device, instead of choosing your speakers or your headphones, you're gonna choose the cable output VB audio virtual cable. And now if I start the audio conversion, you will hear that my voice is not converted at all. You see no difference whatsoever. And that is because now my converted audio voice is being sent out to the virtual audio cable 
but since the virtual audio cable is not connected to anything, you do not hear any difference. So now that we have this, how exactly do we use this in an actual call or inside a video game? Well, it's actually very, very simple, and the principle always stays the same. What you need to do is that inside every single application that you use, for the input device, instead of using your microphone, you're gonna choose the audio cable output. So basically, to summarize, we start with our main microphone, then we convert our voice using the software, that converted voice is then sent out into the virtual audio cable, that is then getting picked up inside the application, so that when you talk, other people can hear your converted voice instead of your real voice. So like for example, if I click on let's check, and I start talking, You hear that now my voice is the same as that e-girl model that we used earlier. And you can of course use that same trick in any application that support voice call. So something like Discord or WhatsApp, or Zoom, or whatever you're using, and even Steam. That's right. Now, personally, I don't really play a lot of video games, but if you want to sound like an e-girl while playing multiplayer, well, you can do that also. Basically, just click on Steam, then click on Settings, then under Voice, for the voice input device, you're gonna choose, once again, the cable output. And for the voice output device, you're gonna choose your speakers or your headphones. And now if I do the microphone test... Once again, be sure that my voice is the voice of that e-girl model that we used earlier. So then next, if you couple this with like an i2D and some live 2D models, you can truly become any VTuber that you want. Which really makes this tech really, really super cool. So yeah, really cool. And if you have any questions about the software whatsoever, don't forget that I provide priority support on Patreon. So if you have any questions whatsoever, just send me a DM and I will try to answer your question as soon as possible. So yeah, there you go. Now you should know everything there is to know on how to convert your voice in real time using RVC. So if you can, definitely try this out and have some fun. And there you have it folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my video. Videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are literally the reason why I'm able to make these videos. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm Batman.